Hello, this is John Sowash, and I'm excited to give you a quick overview of the updates to Google Classroom that were announced this past week during the 2018 ISTE conference in Chicago. Google Classroom has become an essential tool for many teachers, and Google has demonstrated its commitment to the product every year by pushing out some major updates in the summer prior to the start of the school year. And this is no exception. We got some major updates, possibly the biggest update to Google Classroom uh, since it was launched in 2014. So I'm gonna give you a quick overview. Uh, to start, I'm just give you kind of a, a broad overview. Um, the big thing that Google is doing is they are reorganizing Classroom. So currently in Classroom, you have three tabs across the top. You have the stream, students, and the about page. That is being reorganized. Now the stream is still going to be present, but it's going to take on a much different role. It's really gonna provide kind of a snapshot, an overview of activity in the class, focusing on class discussions and upcoming assignments. We have a new page called Classwork that's gonna do a much better job organizing assignments and grouping them uh, topically by date, making it easier for both teachers and students to manage uh, the assignments in the course. Then we have this new people page, which is a one-stop location for teachers to manage their class roster, co-teachers, and also parents uh, through that guardian access that uh, was launched about a year ago. And then finally, it's not a page, but Google has um, uh, included a dedicated settings area where all of the classroom settings are grouped into one central location rather than being scattered around um, has, as they have been in the past. That's a quick overview. Now let's take a uh, deeper look at these uh, actual features. So here, first off, is a screenshot of the stream page. You can see that it's a little simpler. We don't have the topics, you know, typically the topics would appear down there. Those have been removed. Um, and it's really just a snapshot of the assignments uh, itself. Like if you look uh, down here at um, this assignment here, you'll notice it doesn't include like due dates. Um, it just really is the assignment title. And that's because all of that information is now being pushed up to this classwork tab that we'll look at here in just a second. So students are gonna arrive in the stream. It's gonna give them a quick snapshot. You can see, you know, upcoming and what is due soon, which I think is a good thing. Uh, classroom can get a little overwhelming because there's a lot of content there and this will help uh, simplify it. So let's look at that classwork page. Here you can see what that's going to look like. A couple of uh, major things. You'll notice they got rid of the, you know, the plus symbol that used to be down there, and instead they've included this create button. That's where you're going to create your new assignments. I'll take a closer look at that here in a second. And then the other interesting thing that they've done is the topics rather than being just these little tags that get attached to an individual assignment, now are very bold and easy to see. So that blue purplish uh, banner, that would be a topic. Most teachers will probably end up uh, creating those as like units uh, in their course. And then all the assignments in that unit will be listed there. Now, one interesting thing that you can kind of see on this page is right here, you can see a scheduled post. So obviously we're signing as a teacher right now, but it is interesting to see that those scheduled posts kind of show up contextually within the unit rather than hidden up at the top of the stream as they were in the past, um, collapsed and kind of invisible. So this is really gonna help a teacher could theoretically schedule out a whole bunch of posts for different units and have them ready to go um, even before that unit is uh, gonna be taught in the classroom. Um, so that's a quick look at the stream. We'll come back to some more details on that here in a minute. Um, I want to jump into, let's take a look at that create menu. So when you click that uh, create button, the top left corner, um, this is what you're going to see. Now you got some, some things we've already had, like assignments and questions, reuse posts. Those have already always been there. This is the big one right here. So this allows you to create a Google form directly from within Classroom. You don't have to go to Google Drive uh, to create your form and then link it as an assignment. It's built right in uh, to Classroom, which, uh, which is cool. That'll be helpful. Now you're also not seeing the assignment, um, or excuse me, the announcement tool um, or post type, which um, has disappeared here. And that's because that 
post will be on the stream. So your announcements are just going to stay in the stream, whereas all of your quiz questions, basically anything with a due date, will be stuck in this classroom tab. Um, so that's a little quick look at that. Um, we'll come back to and talk a little more about quizzes here in a minute. Um, next, I want to show you this um, settings tab. So this is available, you can see from the, uh, the home screen of Classroom right up here, that setting gear, the cog. Um, that's going to get you access to your settings. Now, it's been a little annoying in the past because the classroom settings, like your class code, um, you know, your class uh, commenting settings, guardian summaries, um, all of that was in different places within a uh, classroom. You had to do a lot of clicking to get there. So now we can see we have one central location for all of those uh, different things, the code, the comments, deleted items. Uh, and so on. I think that's a good um, change, kind of simplifies and streamlines um, that feature. So we've looked at um, the stream, we looked at uh, the classwork as well. Um, now I want to take a look at this people tab, that third one, this will be another new feature for classroom this year. Uh, the people tab is where you're going to manage um, three different things. So you're going to have your co-teachers. So if you have a special ed, um, if your administrator wants to have access to your classroom, you're going to see a list of all your teachers there. You'll also have all of your standard student options. This is where you're going to be able to mute students so they can't comment, remove them for the class, email them um, if you wish. And then if you scroll further down on this page, you would see um, the guardians as well. You know, that'll be um, where you will invite them into the class. So just kind of a one-stop shop for all the people who are um, have access or interact with the class. Um, last thing we want to look at is a little bit deeper into some of the assignment updates that they've uh, created. So when you click on that uh, plus button, create button, you're going to see several things. You saw the quiz assignment feature. And the big deal for that is not only can you create your form, directly from within classroom but they now have this pretty interesting locked quiz mode um, this will only work if you are using chromebooks in your classroom and what it does is it allows a teacher to prevent students from navigating to other websites kind of browsing the web um, during a quiz so here you can see you know when you create that quiz assignment the big change is this right here. If I turn that on, when a student enters that quiz, everything else in the browser will get locked down so they can't open a new tab or go anywhere else. Again, that feature will only work on managed Chromebooks, so Chromebooks that are controlled by your school district. Um, we don't have a lot of information about you know, how that actual setup um, occurs if any setup is required by your you know IT director uh, to configure your network to make that happen. I kind of imagine there will be some things you may need to do or we're just waiting on uh, more information uh, from Google on that. But that's pretty cool. That's been a, a, a big complaint of teachers in terms of using quizzes uh, in the past. A couple other things on the uh, classwork page that are uh, helpful, I think. We already talked about the grouping of assignments into topics and units. Um, you can see, again, that here on this page, really nice, those blocks of text um, kind of grouping everything together. I think that'll be helpful. Um, but the last thing I want to show you is if I click on, I can't see it right here, but there's going to be, there's dot, three dots, a little snowman that's going to be there. And then you'll also see it right there. If you click on those dots, um, you are going to see the option to move that post up or down in um, the coursework page. That's um, a new feature. <laughs> it's kind of silly. Seems like it should be an obvious one. But in the past, on the stream page, you could only the only thing you could do is move to top. And so teacher had to play this little game where they would move stuff up and let things go down um, to get it into the order that they want. So now we have the ability to manually organize things uh, much easier, uh, which is a, a great thing. That's, you know, honestly a feature that should have been there all the time. 
So that's a quick update of the major things that we know about this. Um, I do have a detailed blog post that reviews all of this as well. I'll link to that in the, um, the comments on this video if you'd rather read than watch uh, the updates. So big question, when can you get access to these features? The official word that we have at this time is that all of these features will be available no later than August. Now, I don't know if that's August 1st or August 25th. Um, they have not indicated. There is an opportunity for you to sign up to become an early beta tester of these features. I've already done that. Um, I don't have access yet, so I, I don't know how early that gets access. Um, that link to the form that you need to fill out is on Google's blog posts related to the classroom stuff. It's also right there if you just want to uh, write that down. I'll put that same link in the uh, comments on the video so you can click on it uh, as well. So if you go there, you fill it out. Um, each person has to fill it out individually. It's not for your domain. It's for just an individual user who will get early access uh, to these features. I'm hoping that will happen um, you know, this month in June. Um, certainly in early July um, would be wonderful. Um, so we could test out and uh, prepare some training materials uh, for everyone prior to the beginning of the school year. One additional thing I'd like to uh, share with you. Um, I am teaching a five-week online course, uh, which will help you launch into the 2018 school year. Uh, it's called Classroom Kickstart. And during that course, I'm going to review everything that you need to know about Google Classroom to use it successfully and also provide you some really simple, effective strategies for teaching with Google Classroom. So this five-week course is more than just how to set up a class, though we will talk about that. We'll review all of the new features, but I'm also going to share some very specific, concrete lesson ideas, how to create engaging, challenging lessons uh, that work very, very well with Google Classroom. A uh, five-week course starts at the end of July, July 29th, 2018. Um, the course itself is $99, uh, five weeks. And if you're interested in more details, you can check it out at uh, chrm.tech slash kickstart for more information. That's a quick overview of Google Classroom as we uh, know it. Um, love to know what your favorite feature is. Leave me a comment. And if you have any questions, feel free to leave them uh, as well. And I'll do my best to answer them and tell you what I know.